Welcome to the nomenclature module of the Carbohydrate Chemistry Stream of Resources. My name is Ryan Snotinsky, and I am Glyconet's Training and Project Management Coordinator. In this module, you will learn how to accurately describe the structure of a sugar through its name. This module is organized into two general sections. We will begin with unmodified sugars containing only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and discuss how to name open chain and cyclic sugars before moving into glycosides and oligosaccharides. We will then go on to discuss sugars modified with substitutions and protecting groups, as well as anhydrosugars and sugars that have been oxidized or reduced. Note that this video is accompanied by a reference document containing the common names of some of the most frequently encountered sugars. Please feel free to look at this document as we progress through the presentation. Let's begin. Sugars can be classified into two groups, depending upon where the carbonyl group is located. Sugars with carbonyl groups at C1 are called aldoses, while sugars with the carbonyl at a different position are called ketoses. When we number the carbons in the backbone, we try to give the carbonyl group the lowest possible number. Glucose is one example of an aldose, while fructose is an example of a ketose. Ketoses, such as fructose, with the carbonyl group at carbon 2, are the most common. Notice that both of these sugars are D sugars, as the C5 stereocenter furthest from the carbonyl group is on the right hand side of the molecule. Aldoses and ketoses are distinguished by the ending of their names. Aldoses end in "-ose", while ketoses end in "-ulose". A prefix is added to indicate the number of carbons in the sugar backbone. For instance, an aldose with six carbon atoms is called a hexose, while a ketose with five carbon atoms would be a pentulose. IUPAC has a systematic method of carbohydrate naming that we encourage you to become familiar with. In this module, we will be focusing on the more commonly used naming conventions. As mentioned in the introductory module, sugars prefer to adopt ring forms as opposed to open chains. Six-membered sugars are called pyranoses, while five-membered sugars are called furanoses. These descriptors are included in the sugar name to specify the ring size, and a lowercase p or f is used in the short form of the name. Once sugars form rings, it is also necessary to specify whether the alcohol on carbon 1 is in the alpha or beta configuration. The method for distinguishing alpha and beta anomers is explained in the intro module. Cyclic reducing sugars have an alcohol attached to carbon-1 and can interconvert between different ring forms through the open chain. This process is called mutarotation. A glycoside is formed when we replace that OH with a different group bonding through the glycosidic oxygen, which prevents mutarotation. A non-carbohydrate R group is referred to as an A-glycone. To name glycosides, replace the E ending of the reducing sugar with "-ide", and put the name of the aglycone substituent at the front. In this example, having a methyl R group would give us methyl beta D glucopyranoside, while a phenyl substituent would be named phenyl beta D glucopyranoside. Several carbohydrate molecules attached together form an oligosaccharide. Typically, the sugar containing the hemiacetal is drawn furthest to the right. The hemiacetal alcohol is outlined in red in this drawing. This end of the molecule is termed the reducing end, with the non-reducing end on the left. Oligosaccharides containing reducing sugars are named as glycosyl glycoses, with the sugar names ordered from the non-reducing end to the reducing end. 
The linkages are specified using a combination of numbers and arrows. In this example, we have a glucose molecule attached through its anomeric carbon to carbon 4 of a galactose molecule. The name of this disaccharide would then be alpha d glucopyranosyl 1 4 beta d galactopyranose. If we change the reducing sugar to a glycoside, the OSE ending becomes an IDE. Attaching a methyl substituent to the reducing sugar would change our example to methyl alpha D glucopyranosyl 1 4 beta D galactopyranoside. In the abbreviated form of the name, the A glycone is specified at the end. Oligosaccharides are often branched. To name these molecules, first name the parent chain using the guidelines we have just discussed. The parent chain should be the longest chain in the molecule. If both branches are the same length, the parent chain contains the branch with the lower attachment number. Next, name the branch and then insert it into the parent name with square brackets at the point of branching. The example above is color-coded to help illustrate this point. We will now move on from naming unmodified sugars to naming sugars modified at positions other than C1. In order to carry out these modifications, we must first remove a hydroxyl group, and therefore these modified sugars are all deoxy sugars. Let's work through an example to illustrate how to name modified sugars. The first thing to note in the example below is that the sugar is in the D-galacto configuration. You can also see that this sugar is the beta anomer of a benzyl glycoside. Now let's look at the modifications. Two hydroxyl groups have been removed from the usual galactose molecule, one at C4 and the other at C2. The C4 hydroxyl group has been replaced with a fluorine atom while the C2 hydroxyl group has been replaced by an acetamido group. Putting all of this information together, we can name this sugar benzyl 2-acetamido 2,4-dideoxy-4-fluoro beta-D-galactopyranoside. Notice that the positions of the deoxygenations are identified with the deoxy descriptor, and the di prefix is added to indicate that there are two deoxygenations. Also, the modifications are alphabetized, as you can see by comparing the underlined first letters. Prefixes such as di and tri are not counted when alphabetizing. Sugars where hydroxyl groups are replaced with hydrogen are a bit of a special case. In the sugar below, we see that there is no hydroxyl group on C4. We cannot call this sugar glucose, nor can we call it galactose. Those descriptions are too ambiguous. Instead, we need to follow the formal IUPAC rules and look at the configuration of the hydroxyl groups that are present. If this sugar were in its open chain form, the alcohols on carbons 2, 3, and 5 would be on the right, left, and right-hand sides, respectively. Looking at our reference document, we see that xylose has this same configuration. Therefore, we can classify this molecule as a xylohexopyranoside, as it has six carbon atoms in a pyranose ring. The full name, then, is methyl 4 deoxy alpha d xylohexopyranoside. Carbohydrates modified at C1 are often encountered in synthetic carbohydrate chemistry. Amine-modified sugars are named as glycosylamines, while the addition of halogens results in glycosyl halides. Thiosugars specify that the substitution is at C1, both in the reducing sugar shown here and in thioglycosides. Replacement of the anomeric alcohol with hydrogen results in an anhydroaldehyde, as a water molecule is lost in its creation. 
Sugars containing protecting groups are named similarly to modified sugars. The number of each type of protecting group is indicated using a prefix such as di or tri, and a number used to indicate the position of the protecting group. The protecting groups are then listed alphabetically, disregarding prefixes such as di and tri. The atom through which the protecting group is attached, usually oxygen or nitrogen, is also indicated with an italicized capital letter. Anhydrosugars are formed through the loss of water between two alcohols. In naming these sugars, we indicate the position of the alcohols involved and then add anhydro in front of the name. Oxidized and reduced sugars have additional naming conventions, and we will cycle through these molecules beginning on the bottom left of this diagram. If the aldehyde of an aldose is oxidized to a carboxylic acid, the resulting sugar is called an aldonic acid. Oxidation of the C6 alcohol to a carboxylic acid will create an algeronic acid. If both carbons 1 and 6 are oxidized, an aldaric acid is formed. Lastly, aldetols are the products of the reduction of the C1 carbonyl group to an alcohol. This brings us to the end of this module. You now know how to name both unmodified and modified sugars and have access to a reference document to help you identify and name some of the most common carbohydrate molecules. We hope that the resources provided with this video will help you to clearly describe sugars as you continue with your studies.